Hello everyone and welcome to our lecture on projection. Today we will continue our discussion about how cameras operate or how cameras generate images and we will look into the geometric side of things today. Projection can be used to create these type of optical illusions that look like a three-dimensional object or a three-dimensional plane that is not on the ground but when you look at it from the side it is actually painted to account for the projection that happens in the camera and trick the camera and the viewer to give a sense of different scene structure in terms of where the objects uh, appear. This also creates some illusion in regular scenes as well. For example here uh, the line you see around the ticket corner as well as the line you see in the background of the wall are actually the same size. But because of projection, because we know that things that are far away will be smaller in the image essentially, we think uh, the ticket line is shorter than the, the line that corresponds to the wall in the background. We have talked a bit about projection in our last lecture, but let's put it in mathematical terms. Here we will use the pinhole camera model as an approximation and put the optical uh, center or the center of projection at the origin of our XYZ space. This is just the beginning. We will see what happens when our camera is not at the origin later in this hour. Then we will put the image plane in front of the center of projection. This is just because it is more convenient for us to derive equations or think about how the camera takes a picture. And in this coordinate space we will set things as the camera looking towards the negative z so that the x and y directions feel similar to what we are used to when we are dealing with images. We can derive uh, simple projection equations by using the similar triangles as we again discussed in our last lectures. So when you draw a line from the center of projection to the object in the 3D space, it creates a rectangle when we project it down to the XZ plane. And a similar uh, triangle also happens on the image plane when we look at the projection of the 3D point onto our uh, image plane. And we can derive where the 3D point will end up on our image plane very simply, essentially by dividing the X and Y coordinates by the Z coordinate, the depth. And here D, the distance of the image plane to the center of projection, represents the focal length of our camera. And uh, as, as we saw last time as well, the focal length will change how large things appear. So it will scale the X and Y coordinates of the image. Is this a linear transformation? No, we have to divide by Z or we have to divide by the depth of the point with respect to the center of uh, projection. This creates a nonlinear uh, representation. So we will again go back to the homogeneous coordinates and solve this uh, nonlinearity issue. When we use the homogeneous coordinates on the image plane for two dimensional operations, we put a third dimension as one that is a dummy dimension essentially for our purposes. We will divide the x and y here with the last element of this matrix to get our uh, actual x and y coordinates. When we put 1, it is just our original x and y coordinates. And we can simply extend this to 3D by creating a 4-dimensional vector for the 3-dimensional original coordinates that we have. And we convert it back to regular coordinates, the non-homogeneous coordinates, again by dividing everything by the last element in this time 4-dimensional vector. So we can write down the projection equation that we derived from the similar uh, triangles a moment ago as a matrix multiplication once we are using the homogeneous coordinates like this one. And again we divide our two dimensional coordinates with the third element on the image plane uh, to get our actual x and y coordinates on the image. And this is known as the perspective projection and this matrix is called the projection matrix. As we are dealing with homogeneous coordinates here, we can actually multiply the projection matrix by whatever and the results it gives us will uh, still be the same. There is a simpler version of perspective projection that is called orthographic projection that approximates the image plane to be infinitely far away from our uh, center of projection. And the projection matrix or the orthographic projection matrix in this case uh, looks like this. 
which does not depend on depth anymore because once we put the center of projection infinitely far away from the image plane everything else uh, away from the image plane is also infinitely far away so when you divide them you get one and this is used in uh, simple computer graphics especially simpler games from i guess now 20 years ago and as you can see in any of these images here it looks kind of weird it doesn't look really 3d to us and when we use the perspective projection with our modern games and rendering engines and everything everything looks uh, more realistic as if they are an actual photograph taken with a real life camera so we can see projection as a dimensionality reduction we are putting the 3d objects or 3d coordinates onto our uh, 2d plane that represents the image we are losing the real angles between uh, objects the distances are not reliable anymore because it depends on our weaving direction and many points essentially all the points along one line that is starting from the pro center of projection will fall onto the same point on the image plane in real life how we see this is that we are only able to see the closest thing to us and the things that are behind the closest thing uh, on this line will be occluded or it will they will be behind uh, the first thing we see so we won't be able to uh, see those objects in projection points uh, map to points lines point to lines and if there is a lin linear line it will still be linear in the projected result and planes will also map to planes on the image one thing that we call as perspective is vanishing lines so the parallel lines in real world end up at the same place when the distance is uh, infinite each direction in space has their own uh, vanishing lines but if the original lines in the 3d space are actually parallel to our uh, image plane they will still remain parallel and they will not uh, vanish this is what we mean by the vanishing point lines that are actually parallel to each other in real world uh, will end up vanishing together at the at one point that is called the vanishing point let's put our camera in the real world and see what happens in real world our coordinate system may very well be defined different than uh, our simple camera coordinate system where we put the center of projection at 0 0 0 so our camera coordinates will look like this here we will call them v u and w instead of x y z and in the real world we have the x y z coordinates we need to relate these two so that we can model the projection uh, mathematically in real world scenarios so one is called the world coordinate system here and the other one is called the camera coordinate system so let's see how we can project a random point in the world coordinate system xyz to our uh, actual camera so we first need to transform the real world coordinates the xyz's to the camera coordinates and for this we need to know the camera position so where the camera is located with respect to the world coordinate system towards where the camera is pointing at uh, that is the camera orientation or rotation in terms of the world coordinates and we will also need to know the camera intrinsics we will look into what intrinsics mean in a bit so a camera is described by a translation uh, that is the shift of the optical center with respect to the origin of the world coordinates there is a rotation which is where we are looking at with the camera or towards where we are looking at with the camera represented by a rotation matrix r these are the extrinsic parameters so these are called extrinsic because it relates the camera with the world outside the camera and we also have the focal length the principal point the center of the image and the pixel size that are related to our camera specifically and they are called the intrinsic parameters and the projection equation uh, can still be boiled down to a simple uh, matrix multiplication in homogeneous coordinates here we call the combined matrix that does the projection as well as the rotation and translation of the camera as pi and pi uh, can be modeled as the multiplication of the intrinsic parameters the projection matrix the rotation of the camera and the translation of the camera like this 
Here, when you look at this decomposition of the pi matrix, you might see a bit different representations. For example, this T can be uh, written down as R times T as well in some of the notations. So in a simpler way, this is what we are doing. We have the world coordinates. We have a point in world coordinates. So we are trying to draw a line from this Q point world coordinates to our center of projection and looking at where this line crosses our image plane. We are doing this in homogeneous uh, image coordinates, of course. So in order to get rid of the e extrinsic uh, part of the projection equation that we just saw, we can create a canonical form for the camera. That is, we will shift the world coordinates to make sure that the origin is at the center of projection and uh, x and y axis and the z axis are defined the way we want them to define it, as we talked about at the very beginning of the lecture. To get to the canonical form, we need to translate the coordinate system by the translation of the camera. And since we are using homogeneous coordinates, we can represent it as a matrix multiplication like this. And as the second step, we need to align our coordinates together. So we need to rotate the coordinate system. And this can be done with a 3x3 three three, uh, rotation matrix. And now we have uh, shifted our uh, coordinates so that the camera and world coordinate systems uh, coincide with each other. Then we can use our simple uh, projection equation together with our intrinsic parameters. The intrinsic parameters are in general defined like this, where if is the focal length, alpha here is the aspect ratio of the pixel. In most cameras or in any camera that you may use in real life, this alpha parameter will be one. But in some uh, specific cases, for example, in some fancy cinema lenses, this aspect ratio is a little bit different. The same goes with skew. Usually our pixels are not uh, skewed so that we ignore this parameter. And the principal point is where exactly the Z axis uh, crosses the image plane. Then our projection matrix becomes a combination of all these uh, parameters. Here, uh, these three matrices does the coordinate translation for us. And the K matrix uh, puts them in our uh, 2D image coordinates. You will see in most cases that this part of the equation is shown like this uh, just for convenience. It is essentially boiling down everything happening in there using the parameters that we are interested in, the rotation and the translation. And sometimes you will see that this translation is defined in a camera coordinate system, which becomes T when you multiply R and C because the translation vectors change from coordinate system to coordinate system naturally. So you will see this uh, simplified form in uh, most discussions about projection. So this vanishing point or the perspective distortion that we also saw in our last lecture when we talked about how you should take portrait photographs, if you remember, creates problems uh, when you are doing architectural photography, for example. If you have to look upwards, then you are not directly looking at the plane. So the plane is no longer parallel to uh, the image plane. So the buildings will look a little bit weird because of the uh, perspective distortion. And for this specific uh, purpose of architectural photography, where this vanishing lines or this tilt is only coming from looking upwards, you can shift the lens a little bit to make sure that the image plane is parallel to the plane that corresponds to the building and you will get a much more realistic or more uh, satisfying photograph for buildings. The image can also be uh, distorted because of lens flows and this is a very common problem for uh, many different cameras. Your phone camera is probably just doing the correction by itself but when you take a photograph with an actual camera, you sometimes need to correct for these distortions. Common photo editing software like Lightroom or Photoshop will have a library of lenses with their distortions to make the correction as easy as possible for the photographers who are not really interested in matrix multiplications and stuff like that. And two types of distortion that we will talk about today is a pink cushion and a barrel. On the left hand side image here, you can see that the lines that needs to be parallel are actually bending towards each other a little bit. This is the pincushion one. 
and in the uh, picture with the window you can see that the edges of the window are bending outwards from each other which is called the barrel uh, distortion and these also can be corrected mathematically to get a more realistic image as, as you see here so the reason this is happening is when the aperture and the lens have some uh, space between them so ideally we want the projection to look like this in an ideal scenario but if the pinhole is a bit far away from the image and closer to the object you will get a barrel distortion especially as you go far away from the center of projection and when the distance is reversed you will get the pin cushion distortion uh, as you see here and we can model this distortion with some high order parameters because the amount of distortion will depend on where you are looking in inside your image plane and when if we want to correct for this we will just need to find these parameters somehow uh, by looking at the parallel lines for example and how they are bending and fit a model to this that will be our uh, distortion model and instead of using the projection operation that we saw before for ideal cases we will apply these equations uh, when we are doing the projection estimating the intrinsic parameters and estimating the extrinsic parameters are called camera calibration and it is an important part of uh, doing computer vision if you are trying to estimate the 3d structure of the scene using multiple cameras for instance but we will not go into the details of uh, ca camera calibration in this lecture the required reading for today are uh, the sections 2.1.4 and 5 on projections and lens distortions thank you very much for listening and uh, i will see you in our stereo lecture next time